Um, okay, I'm Pablo Neira. I'm part of the um, NF Tables um, team, and I'm going to talk about. I'm going to repeat the presentation that I made in um, the NetConf that we had just a couple of days before this um, conference. So I'm going to talk about uh, NF Tables as an interface for ACL hardware uploading, which goes basically in the direction of using the existing interfaces to offload um, ACL. So, um, so we, we basically expect NFT, the software side, to be more express than, than expressive than hardware. So if, but I anyway, if, if there is something that we don't support in software, it should be easy to extend. So, um, so we we get it think we in sync with something that is not just supported. So, what we have is um, what we expect are matches like packet fields that we are going to match. Metadata and actions, just mangle packet fields, metadata, accept drop, and so on. And so the proposal goes in the direction of adding a new um, hardware family. And that, well, we currently have uh, five, five hardware families. And this hardware family is a family that, when at creating a table, you will indicate that this table is, a, is, a, um, is, 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 is hardware. So all the rules that the user will introduce will will go to will go to hardware. The, the, the user will have full knowledge that what 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 it, what it configures goes to hardware. Um, <clears throat> we need some uh, NDOs to to pass configuration to the driver, and the driver will have to deal with with what we pass. NF tables will will behave as a catch of the existing configuration, and we, as we've been discussing, we provide an unified interface to configure the ACL in Linux. So, <clears throat> as I said, we add a new hardware family. Um, semantically, this, this family is expected to be before ingress. Um, we also need, a, in INF tables, we have different uh, chain types. And uh, in this case, we, we would add a filter chain type for this table, it will be a dummy chain in the sense that it will not register any software hook. So it will be just um, behave as a list of rules. And then um, we will restrict to only a low base chain. So we will not have jumps or go to the non-base changes, non-base non chains. So basically the idea goes in the direction of um, Creating, we, we already do uh, do this in user space. Is something that Patrick uh, did in the what we call the delinearized path. Basically, the idea is to take the um, DNA link uh, message, and we are going to convert it in some intermediate data structure, which is basically a tree, a very small tree. Um, we well, initially I consider uh, passing the full DNA link message, but that was going to be a bit of a mess. So. Uh, this intermediate data structure is just a list of what we call the statements, and those statements basically they they um, they be, they are they are the root of um, a very very small tree, basically a couple of relationals. In that case, what would you have there is just expressing matching uh, payload. Um, payloads are represented as a base offset and length, and we are masking what we get from the from the packet, and we are going to um, uh, compare it. Then, again, fetching data from the payload, comparing, and just issuing a verdict. This this small tree, um, we attach it to the NFT rule object, and in the two-phase commit um, protocol that we implement in NFT, once we have um, parsed the entire batch containing all the rules. What it happens is that for each um, for each um, for each transaction object that contains the command that needs to be um, needs to be performed, um, we call NF tables commit, and we pass to the to the device um, using the NDO the the list of transaction objects. In the first step, the the, um, the driver will evaluate if the transaction, uh, if the list of transaction objects contain things that are that the driver that the hardware is capable of offloading. 
And basically, the driver we have to um, create the internal representation of that um, rule object. Then, in the second step, one we made made sure that all of the rules can be expressed in hardware. We basically um, push it into into the hardware. Um, otherwise, just return an error and indicate to the to user space what what has happened. No operation not supported, or um, flow tables is full, or whatever reason. Yeah. I'm just wondering if we are having on the kernel side some um, NDO flow program um, callback already. Um, why are we not centralizing the conversion to, well, why are we having the drivers uh, interpret NF tables internal stuff instead of doing one conversion and into like the driver representation, the, the flow representation? I don't, I don't understand the question. I mean, Use like, for example, John Fastabin's flow abstraction to implement uh, the actual programming of the hardware. Like we could have an M NFT to flow, flow rule conversion layer, and that use existing a hardware interface that we're going to have for an NDO op. We're going to have to actually program the hardware. Yeah. I think is what he's trying to say. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you mean by passing the the, the the interface, the NF tables interface? Um, no, I think well, basically the drivers are going to export some some flow programming uh, interface. Exactly, and um, it seems more reasonable to do the conversion of the NF tables rule set to some generic flow representation in NF tables, and then pass that flow stuff to the driver. Yes, exactly. No, yes, no, no. So I, probably I, I didn't manage to explain it fine. So the conversion ha happens in NF tables. It's not not in the driver. Yeah. So the drivers wouldn't have NF table specific uh, NDO functions, but just the generic um, flow rule, yeah, flow yes. add API. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yep, exactly. Thanks. Yes, yes, you can exactly. also verify at that point using the Flow API whether you'd be able to program it or not. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm, thanks. Okay. So, um, well, basically, the, the idea is that we can reuse all the user space software that we have, including the NFT and all the low level user space libraries. And, um, and the, the user we only need to, um, well, it, it would build. We will build the batch in the same way that it does. Just n all it needs to specify a new uh, NF net filter uh, protocol family to indicate that the message is targeted to the, to, to the hardware. Um, we will need also a service to inquire the capabilities of the hardware. So um, basically, the user will be will be able to uh, to know what what it can do or what what, what can do and what cannot. And that tree, I think, well, I, we've been, I've, been, I've been discussing this with Patrick. We, I, we could um, reuse it for uh, GT in NF tables within, within another feature, so um, can be useful for more, more, more things, not only this thing. I guess that part is um, quite independent of hardware offloading. I mean, the representation of the tree, um, I mean, is really independent of the hardware stuff. I mean, you were talking about doing eBPF compilation basically, but um, I think it's quite a different subject. Yes, entirely, uh, yes. My statement was that it, it, it's good but because we, we can even reuse it, so that's all, I mean. Will it work even without creating that hardware chain? Will a seamless offload work if you, if the hardware supports it, if the driver supports it, and if you're creating the usual NFT rules and you want your rules in the kernel to be synced to hardware? Will that also work in this model? The seamless model, the problem is that if we um, have rules that we can represent in hardware and we cannot, I mean, that we cannot represent in, in hardware, we have to represent them in software or so we we need explicit semantics to know what the user needs to know what what, what goes into hardware or what. I mean uh, the reordering of the rules. I mean we we will we will have yeah. rule reordering. Well, the switch driver can decide that and reject the rules in that case, right? And we can have policies to actually reject or and if an application is so interested in knowing the hardware details, there can be another path to request for that information. 
So I, what I I'm trying this, to say th is this is just another instance of the policy selection. Yeah, his yeah. his approach is I'm going to create a special box where the user expresses an intention that you you have to put this in there or let me know that it's not possible. Yes. Otherwise, I don't want any of the rules to be yeah. loaded. Uh oh, I said policy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, Pablo already mentioned it. There are big semantic differences between hooking in pre-routing, hooking in forward, or hooking directly before the kernel is even invoked. So um, if I got your question correct, you were asking about some transparent um, offloading of the existing. Yes. I don't think that's really possible to do because there are really big differences in the what kind of packets you get to see. I mean, in input, um, for instance, we have, it's IPv4 packets, we know that. They have, um, we had some header checks. Um, in forward, routing has already been done and all that stuff. Um, this is semantics which um, the rules can rely on, the chains can rely on. For instance, you can't do a forward match in the input uh, in the hardware, of course. Um, it, it relies on routing information. And the semantics are quite different. Um, so. I think this is actually the right approach to say we are um, in a different spot in the networking processing path right now and um, so and represent that as a different chain. So Patrick, uh, the, the other reason I don't want to do the verification in the driver is because it's going to be duplicated across every driver. It, like if you, if you do their modeling correctly, then the core can know if the flow is legal or not. Right? Yeah. And so we can write that code once and not have everyone rewrite right. it. Right, but those are kind of... so. First, to address what Patrick said, we are actually doing what you just said today. Yeah, uh, with Cumulus Linux rules. supports that. What we do is we scrape the rules out of the kernel, we recompile all the things that we said are bad, we reassemble the rules to the hardware capability, and we stick it into hardware. Mm -hmm. And we handle the, the proper positioning by chain. And That's it's painful. Um, mm -hmm. I know you're going to say yeah, that. So it's, it's painful. It but the downside is here, here's the reason why anything else would be, for us, very problematic. The way people are doing things today, uh, even the people who are deploying with, again, enterprise, big Cisco boxes, they model their entire ACL policy, their security policy, using Linux virtual machines up front before they actually go deploy it, just so that they know that these policies would do what I expect it to do. And what we want to be able to do, what Cumulus has done, is say, just take those same IP table rules, dump them in, it works. If we introduce now a model that says, oh, but now you also have to make the choice that this will get selected for hardware versus what would run in your VM, it breaks our model completely. I'm very sure that it's basically impossible to do a semantic um, equivalent translation it's of, yeah. and that's one of the points. If you want, if you're simulating transparency, then you need also to be equivalent in what you're doing. The, basic rule set starts with a rule which is based on connection tracking state. At that point you which fail. Which we can't do. Yeah. At that point you fail already. Yeah. It's basically yeah. the first rule. You have counters at what, which point you fail. And it's no, counters we were, so, so what we, the choice we made was we have a pre-IP table processor that basically sets up and does a asynchronous query of hardware, so the validation stuff that John was talking about. We do the validation and we'll pre-fail we'll pre the rule if it wasn't going to pass. So can, can I maybe add, and it's not always just about translation. So you, you, we don't want to have the same rules in software that we have in hardware. And you can't do it if you don't separate the chains. No, no, because you may want to process something in hardware differently than you're going to process it in software for, yeah, for a I bunch of so, reasons. Yeah, that's not think, our, our requirement yeah. is we want the exact same rules in software and hardware. But that's and fine, but you can do it in user space and translate it down in to the, into the, his uh, rubber chain. Sorry. And we're not saying we we are not okay with this model. I think this should, this can also be present. It's just that the seamless offload it also can't should be, be allowed. It can be the only model for us yeah, today. Yeah, it can't be the only model. Yeah, exactly. I was just about to say, and say the same thing. And I think we all agree that model is beautiful, but it's not for everybody. And I think it has some side effects. Um, and I think both, my, I kind of agree with Patrick, because I, and I tried to make the same statement before. I think it was not understood. Um, I think we should have both models, frankly, because yeah. I, I, I love what you're doing, and uh, I would I, I'm actually love to use it, but I kind of think that we cannot, it cannot solve all the use cases. That's so the over, I, I totally agree that the overlap model is required uh, completely. Like, there's no question about that. But to not have the symmetric, the pure symmetric model means, fundamentally to us, it means that Linux as an enterprise control plane will have to make people choose that it's not just Linux, it's Linux, but with the hardware offload, 
offshoot, if you will. And that's a choice we don't want to f push people into. I just wanted to add to Thomas's statement. Um, I'm a big fan of doing stuff transparently if it's possible, but I don't see in this case that it's actually possible. So I don't understand how you can actually translate those rules, put them in the hardware, uh, and simulate that it's actually the same thing which is happening. So I don't really see how this could possibly work. We have a switch somewhere here we can show you. <laughs> you're, you're referring to IP tables, right? We're talking NF tables, which no, I no, think is even more No, no, it's not NF tables. You're right. This, right. Is, uh, this is old X tables, IP tables. Yeah, you're right. So, and, and just to make you feel better, um, my reaction to NF tables was, oh, crap. Um, so, <laughs> so, so you're right. I mean, NF tables is a lot more powerful, and there is a lot of semantic and... Uh, Actually, my, I was referring to IP tables. I wasn't expecting you to offload the NF table stuff oh, okay, at this so point. Of, NF tables, actually, it should make it easier to generate the hardware filters because we are basically using the same parameterization. But um, from the semantic point of view, it doesn't really make a difference because, as I was saying, most rule sets will include something which is impossible to offload in a semantically equivalent way in one of the first expressions matches rules very soon in the beginning. So yeah. I don't see how you can actually do that. No, so what we do in that case is we fail the rule. We, we tell the user that this rule is not hardware accelerated and thereby your last transaction is completely fixed. So at that point, you have to um, separate the rule sets. You have to pull individual rules out. You say, okay, yeah. we are gonna, at that point you have to deal with overlap with... Um, no overlap. I mean, rules do overlap in reality. Um, mm, so in our use case, it's not, that's <laughs> not the case. What, what we've seen, right, I mean, enterprise people typically are putting 10, 20, not the van edge, but Within the data center, 10, 20, 30 rules, it's mostly preventing crosstalk. And as I said, they'll model it on a VM, they'll make sure they'll deploy it on a VM, and then see if they can accelerate it in hardware. If you have something very simple where you just have, let's say you're using a couple of port numbers, a couple of very simple ACLs, I can see that you can do that and that you can do that transparently. That's our 90% use case. Your use case, so yes. Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, I get that. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to doing that if it's very clear and very possible. And uh, That's all she's saying. Can I, but uh, don't I'm, saying, I'm saying it's, I, it's a... I'm from that. Can I say something? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, Patrick, you basically you want to just separate that. There's some rules that get offloaded and some that don't, right? That's your end goal. Basically, yes, sure. Um, my opinion is if you want, to, yes, it's the end goal, yeah. Right, right. So you, it, if it, does, it doesn't have to be in a chain, it could be user intent that's, uh, or control intent that tells you that well, I want this to be offloaded. The chain is basically just an abstraction because we're dealing with chains, so we're trying to use the same representation which we always do. This can is I, what, yes. Yeah, can I add a rule to a chain that offloads and a chain that doesn't offload at the same time? Sure. Okay, if I, then we're probably saying the same thing? Yes, right? I guess so. Yeah. I mean, his point was transparency because the rule set is tested in a simulated environment without offloading capabilities. Mm -hmm. And um, so once his customers have tested their rule sets, they don't feel comfortable moving them to a different chain. Well, it seems to be bureaucratic. Um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, there's some markets which are like that. So, okay, Thomas. I think we're actually going in circles and doing the same thing or saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. We understand that we cannot offload everything and we need user intent to define a policy and how to do it. And yes. what, what I think what we learned today is that we want every hardware capability that we offload, we want to have a backup in software that we can fall back to the CPU. So there's always a CPU slow path. So I, I, I'm, uh, in my view, the intent in this case is I don't want anything to fall to the CPU if I choose it not to be, yeah. right? Coming back to Pablo's proposal, I think it makes sense to express this like that. And regarding your problems, um, I would simply add some emulation for the hardware chain, which um, can actually make your customers feel comfortable that they're actually tested in the correct or chain. Or simply rename the, the family e name. In or you could load the hardware chain on your initial software implementation. It would do the software. It would go through the software stack. It wouldn't go into a piece of hardware. Yeah, that's the emulation. Yes. Yes. So. But otherwise, I think Pablo's proposal makes makes a lot of sense to have a semantical um, 
well, to have a clear split be between um, the offloaded stuff and the non I think independent stuff. of anything we're discussing here with the NFT hardware thing, it is worth investigating whether we can make a safe subset of hardware offloadable things in the other tables, and whether and we can determine if that's semantically feasible. Yeah, I, as I have some. It's uh, worth looking into. Yes, I did that already um, about <laughs> ten years ago. Um, we made a study for a company and. Actually, the result was the normal rule set will fail in the first couple, two or three um, lines. Basically, everything we tell the people to do in a rule set will make it fail. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you one more question, Pablo? Do, do you mind if I have a chain per, per table? Because I, I think that solves my, my, my set rules problem. If I can have a chain per table, all um, your NFT stuff still works. I just have, instead of having one chain, I'll have five. Why, why do you want to have several chains? Because I, in the actual hardware, I have a pipeline, and I have different. They're executed in different orders. So you have different different ACA t ACL tables. Yes, and I also can do go tos, so I could relax your go to restrictions a little bit. I mean, I, I obviously maybe first you want to start simple, but uh, you could relax the kind of constraints and, and that way. Packets always traverse. They always traverse the the all the tables. I mean, that's what the go co go to is for, right? You actually, you do support jumps between the tables, right? Um, so actually, I think we should expose the capabilities of the hardware, basically. If the hardware supports multiple, what you call tables, in NF tables uh, language, it would be chains, I guess. Um, we should support, basically create them by default, allow you to populate them, allow you to um, add jumps between them. And, and then we could use the Git flow stuff that we have, either, either embedded in this API somehow or, or just as its own API and you can get the you can get all the capabilities and then I have my set kind of functionality but to, in a more uh, I guess friendly way I guess any okay thanks thank you I was just when I say that I would love to have the same functionality in TC so I can have a order of low QDs can just Add my, you're already working on that? Well, this was planned from the beginning, basically, uh, to be able, uh, I mean, nobody likes TC, TC classification except Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> and this. Very close. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? I mean, um, I think we you had 15, we had 15 years to make that code workable in some way. We had Vernus TCNG at some point, but um, it's gone. And I don't think it will happen in the next 15 years, actually. People will still fight e -invel and will still have to read the source code to actually use that stuff. So we have the classifications. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, it's, not so, it's not so easy to actually hook that up and represent it in a natural fashion, but um, this is definitely a, something I've been thinking about for a long time, and we're going to do it at some point. I've, I have offloaded TC into hardware. Like you said, 10 years ago, I did it 10, at least 10 years ago. And it, it works, it, it, it's, a natural, it's a good fit. Now, if you want to expose pipelines, I agree that you know, having them, those pipelines as tables would make more sense. However, we can uh, expose pipelines as well. I, 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 don't, I think that you can just displace TC with NFT uh, out of the blue. Uh, sorry, I think Thomas's question was more if we would be able to use NF tables for TC classification, not about offloading any of that part. Um, we are also not going to get rid of TC, of course not. We are going to provide an alternative classification system, um, which, sure, we're not going to break that stuff. I mean, we're just going to provide. I was had a laugh yesterday because you were saying, um, don't rewrite it, don't write it another one. Um, this was actually the intention, of course, to also be, there is, a lot of value, in my opinion, in be, being able to use the same classification language for all these different classification systems. So this is an obvious, correct thing to do, in my opinion. I yeah, probably don't have much disagreement on that. So you're saying you can have NFT present a language that may work with TC, with the TC infrastructure? Also, the same capabilities, of course. Basically, TC will invoke the NF tables classification engine, and that one will return um, some right. class ID. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I'm just not well um, clear. Um, you have some NDOs, and uh, at some stage, the uh, the rule gets passed down to the NDO. Is yeah, the right? list of of transaction object. Every transaction object is a container of basically contains the command and contains uh, the object and any context information that is required to perform the, the, the command. Okay, so the object comes down to the NDO and the NDO is attached to a device. Yeah, the, right. ND, the NDO receives the list of transaction and it's going to iterate for, to, for, uh, for each transaction tra okay. object. So, to so see my question is, um, it was not that, um, how does it associate the object with a device? And, uh, and the following question is, is are there situations where Actually, multiple devices are associated with the same object, and if so, how does? What if one has the capability to do an offload and the other one doesn't? Yeah, you you, you have to associate the um, the base chain to the, to the device. Okay, so there's a clear association of yes, the chain. Yes, yes, of okay, course. Thank you. Okay, now I'm, now I'm even more scared. Um, so I, I think that is exactly. Okay, number one, I want to make sure that we, instead of calling it hardware, maybe we call it offload, because at least then the emulated model is something that makes sense. Otherwise, telling customers you're going to run emulated chains on, and you're going to call them hardware makes no sense at all. And um, so I, I'm not sure I fully understood what you said. So if I have two devices with two different capabilities, Am I going to now have to mark? Oh, I guess the You have to make another NFT table attached second. to the attached second it. device. Okay, perfect. Good answer. Yes. No, no. It's one per device. Yeah, well, we actually one chain per device, uh, the, the, the idea. Well, or I mean, um, we just talked about if the hardware actually supports multiple chains and jumps, we can also expose those. Yes, it would be one table, yes, one table, right. one table per device. Yeah, that's and right. You have some explicit bind operation, yes. basically, and um, using the exported flow capabilities, we can use, have user space, the command line front, and say, okay, you're using something which is not supported in hardware and fail, and um, basically, it should do what you expect. Okay. Um, I'll repeat uh, Dave's plea. It might be worth doing the survey again, at least for the class of devices we are looking at. I think there is a very high number of device capabilities that will fit in the base set that connection tracking is clearly not an option, but the rest. Well, I, we don't need to take a survey, I guess. I mean, it's of course imaginable if you have some very sp specific, simple ACLs, then it's uh, possible to do that. I believe you. Um, <laughs> that's um, not the question. By um, definition, anything that would be fitting into the NFT hardware table would fit into this sub safe subset. Yes, I mean, Logically. yes, um, the transparent stuff, basically what I was saying, everything we have been telling people for 10 years for building a generic um, rule set will make it fail. And that's, of course, the generic case is, is very much impossible to do, um, and it's not even worth it. I think we're delving into a hallway yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah. We will find some solution for that. That's yes. Since I have to watch time for myself, um, Pablo, how many more slides do you have? What do you need? How many more, more slides? slides? No. Uh, quick question. Uh, on your last slide, you mentioned you wanted to JIT of uh, NFT tables. How like specifically you think to do it? Well, and I was just considering the, that this uh, intermediate uh, data structure could be used. I mean, it, it, it would be very easy to walk, so then um, you could emit instructions to build the, um, the, 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 full, the, the full blob containing the, the, the eBPF instruction. I mean, probably you, don't, you understand better the details, I mean. Um. I still don't understand, but... Uh, okay. He doesn't have any specific plans, but he thinks that the data structures that would be used to pass the rules down to the hardware for the NFT hardware table case could be beneficial in facilitating a BPF implementation. I think it was even more generic uh, what Pablo meant. He was meaning that the structures we're using internally in NF tables, are the ASP basically can be used to JIT, which is of course true, but not really directly related to any kind of hardware or, or generic hardware but offloading. 
um, basically, sure, you have the AST and you can use it to generate some different code. We're generating Netlink code in quotes, and we can, of course, also generate eBPF, but it's something, it's a very different subject, basically. Yeah. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you.